What's going on, friends? Harley Davidson has tried to give us nice things over the years. The problem is, is that we didn't truly appreciate the things that Harley Davidson was giving us at the time. Case in point, there's been a lot of Harley Davidson models that have come out, had a very short production run. They weren't very popular during that production run, but after they went out of production, these bikes actually became highly, wildly popular in the later years, which has really driven the price on them up. There's several models like this, and so guys, if you find some of these, don't hesitate to buy one. Harley Davidson has tried to do a lot of sport touring models over the years. Now the problem is, is that when they were in production, these bikes weren't exactly popular. Nobody really jumped all over them. But when they went out of production, these bikes really became highly sought after years later. Guys, please don't forget, if you enjoyed today's video, don't forget to hit that like button and consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't done so already. Now, one of the first bikes that's really kind of sought after these days is the FXDS Dyna Convertible. This came out in 1994. This was an Evo. This was the Dyna platform. This bike actually had bags on it. Didn't really come with the windshield, a lot of some of the other accessories that we saw later on with the bikes that were born out of this one, but dual front disc brakes, bags, that was kind of a big deal back in the 90s. This was a bike you could go out and actually kind of day trip or even load it down a little bit and go on a good little long tour with it. Now the Dyna Convertible, this thing ran all the way to about the 2000 model year. It was discontinued for the 2001 model year in favor of the Dyna T-Sport. Now the Dyna T-Sport, this was a wildly popular bike. Well, not it during that time, but it is now. Those bikes, if you find a Dyna T-Sport, especially a really clean one that's still pretty much got all the original accessories with it, these bikes can go for a pretty penny. They had the twin cam 88, once again the dual front discs, they had the soft bags on them, and they also had that really cool fairing that is wildly popular today. You see a lot of Dynas that are built up to look like the Dyna T-Sport. The problem with those are, is that, yeah, they look just like it. I mean, all intents and purposes, they are the exact same bike, but it doesn't have that designation, that model designation, that VIN number designation. So it's not a true Dyna T-Sport. Now, if you're a purist, that makes a huge difference. I've seen a lot of Dyna T-Sports go for a pretty penny, especially with low miles in pretty much near original condition. I mean, we're not too crazy. We're not too worried about the having the stock exhaust unless you're just a really crazy purist and you want everything as it sat from the factory. Now, what makes the Dyna T-Sport really sought after was, once again, it was basically the Dyna convertible, but with the modern updates at the time for the Dyna frame, and not only that, it had the Twin Cam 88. Had a lot of those same features, the dual discs, the bags, plus that added fairing. This was another bike that you could actually cruise around town, go on a day trip. You could load this thing up and go cross country with it. These were really versatile bikes. And not to mention, I like to think the Dyna T-Sport with the fairing and that look, this is what kind of gave uh, the Dyna bros, this is kind of what brought the Dyna bros out and made the Dyna really popular. Now the Dyna T-Sport, this thing had a very short model run. They only made them in the 2001, 2002 model year. 2003 model year, the bike disappeared. And at this point, the Dyna T-Sport, the convertible, anything kind of related to those models went away for a few years. And now in 2005, the Dyna Super Glide was introduced. This bike basically had the same DNA as the Dyna Convertible and the Dyna T-Sport. The only difference was this bike was a single disc front, up front and it didn't have any bags or a windshield. It was kind of one of the, one of the more entry level Dyna bikes. But don't get me wrong, this was an excellent handling motorcycle. It had all the wonderful features of the Dyna, the lighter weight, the good handling, and the more powerful engine. Not to mention, this bike came with the Twin Cam 88. And in 2006, on that Twin Cam 88 on the Super Glide, this was actually going to have the hydraulic cam chain tensioners. Now, 2007, the Dyna Super Glide got the Twin Cam 96. Now, even though this bike was a more stripped down Dyna, you could turn this into a T-Sport or a convertible. There was a lot of things you could do with it. I kind of wish that Harley Davidson would have brought back the fairing and the bags on the Super Glide, but they kind of left it as a blank canvas for you to do with, with what you pleased. Now, the Dyna Super Glide, this bike ran from 2005 to 2014. And what a lot of people don't realize in 2014, 
that last model year, the Dyna Super Glide, this was actually a very special year. At least it was to me, because what a lot of people don't realize is that this bike, instead of the Twin Cam 96 that it had carried all the way through its production run, 2014, the final year of this thing, it got the best twin cam that was ever produced, and that was the 103. So if you find a 2014 Super Glide, it's going to have the 103 in it. Don't pass that bike up. Those are actually pretty rare to come from the factory with the 103. If you see a Super Glide that's got a 103 or bigger in it, it didn't come from the factory like that unless it was a 2014 model. Now, another bike I did a whole video on that was kind of, this one hasn't really gotten wildly popular, but it was a neat model and it was definitely underappreciated, which was the Dyna Switchback. This was the Dyna Cruiser, really the Dyna that nobody wanted. As I mentioned, I got a whole video on this one, so I'm not going to go too deep into it. But with the bags, the windshield, it was all removable. This thing could go from a full-on, basically a Dyna Touring motorcycle to just your everyday run around town cruiser. Really awesome bike. You guys see one and you're wanting something that's kind of the, I always called it the poor man's touring bike because, well, it was significantly cheaper than any of the touring bikes. Plus it was lighter and it was a very capable machine. Don't pass on those for sure. Now, one of the last really highly underappreciated sport touring bikes that Harley Davidson produced was the late Dyna Sport Glide. This bike came out in 2018 and ran to 2021. This bike had the hard clamshell bags on it, inverted forks, Really neat motorcycle, two into one exhaust, had kind of the little chin fairing on it. A lot of guys would take that, leave the fairing on it, and just go ahead and put a taller windshield on it for touring purposes. Now, granted, this bike, it only had the 107 in it, but it was a really fun motorcycle to ride with the inverted forks, quick, sharp handling. It did have some low handlebars on it. A lot of people didn't like that because of the forward controls and how far you sat back on the bike with those really low bars but it was really considered to be more of a sport touring bike. And the bars, honestly, were pretty easily to change, although we know changing bars on a Harley Davidson can be a very expensive pain in the ass. But one thing I think that the Sport Glide really lacked was that it had the 107 engine. I always felt like that bike should have came with the 114 engine. Only problem with that, with the bags, the inverted forks, some of the other things that Harley Davidson gave us, it would have really driven up the price on it. And not only that, I believe Harley Davidson didn't really want that motorcycle competing head on with its Lowrider S with the 114 in it. Now with the Sport Glide only being discontinued just a couple of years ago, this bike really hasn't exploded in popularity, kind of like the Dyna Switchback really hasn't yet but I am seeing more and more of these bikes getting snapped up pretty quick when they come on the used market. Cause you gotta think, this is that new and improved lightweight soft shell chassis with a really good suspension on it, inverted forks, excellent handling. You can go touring on these bikes or you can strip everything down to just your basic run around town cruiser, just like the Dyna Switchback was. So guys, it is really sad that a lot of times Harley Davidson has given us really nice models and they just didn't sell well during their production years, but the lower numbers really led to their popularity after they were discontinued. Now one could argue that they were really a niche market being the sport touring kind of category. But one thing we can all agree on is that the Dyna was definitely never really appreciated until it went away. And I'm sad the Dyna went away. I don't see it coming back. I even look for the touring bikes to move to the mono shock design in the future. But anyhow, guys, was there any other underappreciated Harley models that nobody really cared about while they were in production but got wildly popular after they actually went out of production? Let me know in the comments. But anyhow, guys, that's all I've got for you this week. If you guys enjoyed the video, please don't forget to hit that like button and consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't done so already. But until next week, guys, you stay safe on the streets, ride smart, dodge those cars. I'll catch you guys back here next week with a brand new video. Thanks for watching.